Welcome back, Color Table Heroes, to another Galaxy of Heroes video. I'm your boy Scribble, and today's video we are discussing Sector 3 feats in this brand new version of Conquest, earning our Fury class Interceptor Shards. Some of the feats here might look scary at first sight, but trust in your boy Scribble because he has the solution for you. Oh yes, let's do this. Sector 3 feats then, ladies and gentle beams of the Scribe Tribe. Here we can see the feats that we have. Anticipated Dodge, which is gain foresight 60 times, no problem. Beep Boop. The droids will wish to defeat enemies. Again, this is something that we can farm quite easily. Shifting Sands, gain momentum a thousand times and attempt to inflict purge 300 times. Now, excuse me. These feats may seem scary at first, but honestly, they are all incredibly manageable. Even if you do not have particularly strong Tuscans or particularly strong Inquisitors, there is always a solution for us. Before we begin, though, this is Scribble's public service announcement. If you are still working your way through Sector 3, I want you to keep an eye out for this particular team. I know I'm going into Sector 4, but this team also appears in Sector 3. If you can find this team, Zarasteed Starkiller, make sure you tag it. You need to have this, well, you don't need to have this team available. It really helps if you've got this team available to really help push through these particular feats, okay? Keep an eye out for this. As you're going through, check which squads are available. Make sure you tag this because you will regret it if you do not. Public service announcement ended. Okay, let's get back to it. Okay then, ladies and gentlemen, so for the droid kills, I recommend you go up against the optional boss battle. Don't worry so much about getting it as you go through. What you want to take a look at doing is get through the sector as fast as possible to build up your data disks and unlock the other sectors, and then come back and farm the bonus node at the end of it with the Night Sisters on it, because ultimately you'll be farming up data disk materials. You'll be getting everything that you need to do in order to take your data disks further. Now there are a couple of teams that we can use when it comes to getting droid kills, but obviously the easiest one, as far as I'm concerned at least, is by using your trusty separatist droids. So let's go in, we don't really need Wat Tambor in this. Let's go in with the standard GG team. You could potentially throw in Newt. I guess we won't take in Droidica. We will take in our B2. And mm -hmm. yeah, actually, let's let's take in Newt. Let's take in Newt just to have that little bit extra. So all we're really looking to do here, guys, is farm this back node. Yes, they're Night Sisters and they can revive. That's a good thing, but it's not necessary for us to do this because we're still going to be farming this node anyway. So go in with your standard data disk setups and just look to keep everybody alive. Every single time you're getting kills over here, maybe don't do an AOE, keep Dakra alive. Maybe she can actually get a revive out, which would be nice. We'll be able to gain more and more of our delicious, delicious kills. I shouldn't have killed that with a droid, but there we go. See, just farm this end node here. You can use these GGA droid teams. Most of those kills there will be droid kills. And we can also go in with another team, for example, JTR droids. Now, the benefit of using JTR droids as well is that if you're using BB-8 and if you take in the likes of R2-D2, you will also be gaining additional foresight, which helps with our other feats here. So let's go JTR droids. Now, obviously, the droids here that we have have got additional sources of um, bonus TM at the start, which is fantastic. Feeds into us getting a nice bit of TM train at the start. Let's just find another light side droid. We could go in with Chupio for the days, um, for the blind apologies. I believe actually IG-11 is another source of foresight on his second special. So here we're just looking mostly to get the kills with the droids, but the ancillary benefit is of course that we gain evasions too. JTR also gains foresight, so it all kind of fits in together ultimately. Now these guys do have particularly obscene amounts of, uh, let's actually just cleanse that off our boy C-3PO, obscene amounts of, uh, of speed, so they will outpace you no matter what. Every time BB-8 does that nice little wiggle, he is going to be passing himself foresight, which is great. And look, we got it again there. So let's actually do this. I believe that gives foresight once again. IG-11 being an optimal fifth here, I believe. Let's control Dakar at the moment. And just look to try and get some kills now. Now, obviously, you don't want to get the kill with JTR. BB-8, on the other hand, let's wiggle just to gain that foresight. And if we can just get one more turn. Ah, there we go. Dakar is being nice and kind to us there, reviving everybody. 
Maybe this is going to get a little bit out of control now. So maybe let's think about trying to actually clear the board. Instead of messing around, let's just go and try and get a kill there with BB-8. Let's get a kill over here with R2-D2. And let's do another AoE here. Get some more kills and you win. So... This will give you a bunch of foresight and additional droid kills and you get to go ahead and farm an optimal node for your data current material. And there's our 50 kill with droid units. All very easy and very, very good. Alrighty, so let's take a look at two of the other feats now. We're going to look at doing the foresight feat and we're going to look at doing the purge feat. Try to find yourself a Zaris Starkiller team. They are the best team to use this up against, okay? So I know this is Sector 4. I didn't have one in my Sector 3, but it can absolutely turn up in Sector 3. So what we want to do, guys, is you want to go ahead and pick something like... Something that's going to get the kills down, but under your uh, requirements, under your conditions, okay? I'm going to use a Jedi Master Luke lead here, and I'm going to throw in the likes of Jedi Knight Revan. We're throwing in Grandmaster Yoda, Hermit Yoda. These two are clutch, because these two guys are going to be giving you foresight lots of the time. And then, who do we want to go for the last one? Let's say we'll throw in Shaq T. Make sure you don't have Amplify Agony Data Discs on, guys. You want to be able to keep the enemy alive, Okay. So the way this works is pretty straightforward, it's pretty simple. Zaris is going to be recovering and gaining TM and cleansing off debuffs all of the time. We can actually leave her there alone and still manage to farm this feat quite extensively. Grandmaster Yoda in particular will be jumping forward and he will be gaining foresight, which we then can spread over to all our allies. Group foresight, lovely. Then we can, I don't know, pass this back over to GMY. And the idea here is just we want to look to try and put all of this foresight, call GMY whenever you can, because that is going to give him foresight whenever he attacks someone who's got over 50% uh, health. I like to get rid of um, Mar uh, Visus Mar first, so she can't revive anybody. Once we've gotten rid of her, I'll go after Starkiller because he is the most deadly. Again, always call in Grandmaster Yoda because he's gaining that foresight, as you can see. I suppose we could hop here and then we could spread those buffs. That's lots and lots of foresight gained, and then we'll just use Hermit Yoda here, uh, and we'll just keep on trying to kill Starkiller right now. This is the way. Go into our ultimate, because why not? And you'll absolutely be able to gain so much here from, from your foresight. We'll just keep spreading foresight again. Every single time we're doing that, we're gaining five lots of foresight. Starkiller is now gone. Fantastic. Let's use Hermit Yoda to gain some more TM. Hermit Yoda to gain some more TM. Super! And this is it now. We just All we want to do now is make sure that we don't ever use the coin ability unless we absolutely have to. Swap turns over to uh, Hermit Yoda, Grandmaster Yoda, sorry, as much as possible. And as you can see, whenever we basic her, she's going to be recovering. Make sure you don't daze her anymore, of course. Just basic her. If you've got that um, volatile accelerator, you're going to be healing her up when she puts those dots out. Let's just, um, let's just basic here. As you can see, she heals up. It's lovely. We'll spread that foresight. And yeah, we'll just heal. And then Basica and Basica. And yeah, let's just Basica one more time. Hopefully don't kill her. There we go. She heals up. And even if you do, um, when sorry, when you want to actually kill her, we can just call in over here. We can do a bit of a hop here. We can spread that there. And there we go. We can just basic, big heal. Pass this over to Grandmaster Yoda. Grandmaster Yoda can spread those debuffs. And we'll just basic and gain some more. See, she's constantly gaining all of that health back. Well, not all of that health back, but a lot of that health back. So it makes it very easy for us. Every single time we crit her, she's recovering 30% of her health, which is lovely. And we can just work our way through. This is why we need to remove those volatile, um, sorry, those amplify agonies, because you don't want to be doing all that additional damage to her. Just keep her nice and healthy. Obviously, when it comes to the foresight feat, you do actually need to win the battle, which is why you need to take in someone like um, Jedi Master Luke, so that when you choose to kill her, you've got that option available to you with your um, coin ability, right? So the coin ability will be able to do that. We put the daze on her now. That's probably not an ideal thing to do. Oh, she dodged the hit. She dodged the hit. But as you can see, guys, I've had so many AoE foresights go through already. There's another set of AoE foresights go through. And we can just finish her off whenever we want. I'm not going to do it now because I kind of want to save the stamina on my team. But you do it. Absolutely. 
Alrighty, so we are going to do Inquisitorious now. This is for the Purge feat. You want a full team, Grand Inquisitor lead, Inquisitorious. I'm not using a second sister, I want to say her name is. We're using a standard team here. And again, make sure you don't have Amplify Agony on. You just want to focus entirely on Starkiller. The main aim here is to try to make sure that you've got Purge and Ability Blocks across the board as long as possible. So just make sure you don't kill Zaris, basically. Hit it on auto and don't target Zaris. And that should be enough for you to get a bunch of Purges. Zaris is going to be gaining bonus turn meters as long as you don't put the torture on her. She's going to be gaining a bunch of bonus turn meter, and then every time she uses a basic, she's going to be cleansing these debuffs off people. So they're not going to be getting purge, which means you can immediately start stacking it back up again. Without the Amplify Agony, you should not be able to kill anybody in this team because Zaris is going to be healing them. Just make sure you focus down Starkiller, keep that ability block on him. Eventually, he will hit his ultimate, which will be a bit scary, but hopefully you've got enough purges in you to get through this. We might actually kill Starkiller, which would be an interesting turn of events. Let's see. He's recovering a little bit. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Let's see, do we actually get the Star Killer, or is he going to is he going to recover? Who knows, who knows? But the beauty of this is, like I said, Barris is there just to make sure that you never stick Purge on anybody forever. And then every single time we're gaining those Purges, you will be able to get through that 300 Purges that you need to do relatively quickly. Two, three battles tops doing this, and you do not need to lock in the win. If you do lock in the win, it's not the end of the world because this is still a full team of unaligned force users, which feeds into one of our lovely, lovely global feats. So really, if you think about it, there are no real downsides. So here comes Starkiller. He pulls down a ship on us, even though, even though I'd like to reiterate, that's supposed to be a GAC only ability. He's apparently allowed to have his Omicrons even in Conquest, whereas we are not allowed our Omicrons even in Conquest. So it's a little bit rude. So it looks like we're definitely going to lose this one. I've had it before where he just refuses to call down the ship, and that's ideal, but, you know, I'm guessing he's he's choosing not to do that this time. Um, and yeah, that's about it really, guys. This is the best way of farming purges in my experience, because you can just stack up a whole lot of them stack up a whole lot of them and it doesn't take that many battles to get it done. They just survive. They just survive. As long as you don't have too much DPS on your team, Zaris will definitely always gain that bonus TM. She will always heal. Don't put the torture on her because that will stop the TM gains. But you can see you can actually survive for a surprising amount of time here and uh, and get through a lot of it. It's, it's good. It's good. Ninth sister over there showing just how tanky she really is. Come on, Ninth Sister, you can do it. Vader about to yeet. Starkiller yeets. Use this team, guys. It's useful, trust me. This next one is a particular favourite of mine. I am very fond of delicious cheddar cheese, guys. But we are going to be doing the momentum feats in one, maximum two battles. Now, I've already got it, so I can't show you it triggering. But even with the Tuscans that I have, and I imagine with lower gear Tuscans as well, I can make this work. Go in against the boss node, the GG node right at the end, and take, take in Tuscans. Those of you that remember the recent Galactic Challenge we had with Tuscans against GG will know what I'm talking about here. You can get between 500 and 1000 momentum just off this battle alone. And no, it doesn't make sense, truth be told, guys. We go in, they get a bunch of TM, we get a bunch of that lovely momentum. There it is, we've started our momentum train. Let's go ahead and gain some bonus turns, I guess. <coughs> Excuse me, apologies. Um, and yeah, let's just try and trigger some additional TM over there. So we're gaining additional stacks of momentum. The game is already starting to crash. <laughs> the game is having a hard time dealing with all the momentum. Don't worry if you lose units, it actually does not matter. Oh, our warrior is still alive, so use the first special here. That's passing five to all of our Tuscans. Every single time these guys are gaining TM, we are gaining momentum. And uh, yeah, like I said, it doesn't like you don't need much to make this work. I wish that B2 would actually take some bonus turns though, because those bonus TMs will be very, very useful. And of course, GG is going to kill himself. I I don't even know what to tell you guys. You get so much TM from doing that. If doing this, it is ridiculous. And you don't need to win the battle either. I have won the battle, quite handedly won the battle doing this, but you don't need to in order to gain the TM feats. That's the benefit. When we're stacking this momentum, we're gaining permanent stacking defense, so it makes it very difficult for the enemy to actually kill us. 
which is nice. See if that B2 can gain just a little bit more speed. There we go, we didn't waste any stamina. But trust me, using those Tuscans against GG in particular, sure it might be a waste of 20 or 40 energy, you will get that momentum feat in no time, okay? One or two battles tops, I promise you. Super smashing, great. So moving on to the boss feats, we're going to start off with the mid sector boss feat here and it's against Palpatine. We need to win with Hokey Religions, which is no Jedi, Sith or unaligned force users. And we also need to win with Boba Fett, sign of Jango surviving. Now, if you have got Jabba the Hutt, use Jabba the Hutt with Boba Fett as a fifth unit and you will get this feat without issue. However, instead, we are going to take our typical scoundrels, guys, because scoundrels win matches. We'll go in with Mando, Chewie, Han Solo. We're going to throw in Dash Rendar over here, and we need our boy Scion of Django. Those of you that have seen this team before knows how it operates. What happens is you shoot first, and then as soon as Chewie goes, you win, because Chewie is crazy with Amplify Agony. Things to consider. Visus Mar and Starkiller, they suck. So maybe just go immediately after Starkiller and kill him because, you know, we've got way too much damage output. Dash Rendar can do stuff. There you go, guys. Like, it's just, it's just so easy. Chewie, finish him off, baby. That's how easy that is, guys. If you do not have Bam, I feel sorry for you. Okay, so the boss node is the GG node. Now we can go in and we can use a 501st featuring Bad Batch Echo. Twice as many Echoes in this team is twice as good if you ask me. And the idea is to just go in, you use your form up, and then you should be able to get that AoE daze out. Now the enemy team is incredibly quick, so trust in the fact that you'll have to have some fast mods in order to make this work. Now you can use Jabba the Hutt because the descriptor is wrong. It's actually Hokey Religions. It is not as they try to portray it to be. Um, let's just do a basic here and then we'll do a nice form up here. We want Bad Batch Echo to get that AoE daze out of the gate. Lovely jubbly. And then we can just start going to town. If only we had Echo actually take his turn there instead of Bad Batch Echo. Again, I don't really want this. Echo, can you take a turn? We want this grenade. I really need that GG to die. That GG needs to die lickety split. Uh, let's just basic over here. The idea is we want to stay nice and healthy so that everybody stays alive. Afterwards, we should be laughing. Marvelous. Marvelous. Now, you can do that with a number of other teams. But typically, if you want to make sure that you go in and you don't use any Jedi Unaligned Force user or Sith, Jabba the Hutt is the easiest way of getting this done. Go in with Jabba and you'll laugh your way to the bang. And that is going to do it for this video, guys. I didn't show the Afra feat on the boss sector because I do not have Afra, but I've been told it is very, very easy. So if this video was useful, please do hit that like button and subscribe to your boy Scribe. We have had a lot of new subscribers recently, and I appreciate you all. Let's keep on pumping that number and see if we can hit 7,000 subs by the end of some time. Do it for me, baby. Let's go. Okay, more importantly, if you haven't seen it already, guys, check out my Galactic Challenge video. And if you have seen that, then maybe check out Sector 1 and 2 feats. The rest of the videos are coming soon. Peace out, and may the Force be with you.